all of these people were pioneers in, a, in the true sense of the word. They were really pioneers. Um, and you and you know, everybody else you know, who's, who's African American stand on their shoulders. I'm uh, Toby Okora. I'm an offensive lineman on the football team from Charlotte, North Carolina. And being a black man at Brown, I've only been here for a few years, and it seems like a long time going through college, but I realized that there's a lot that I still don't even know about the black history at Brown coming before me, and I would just love to learn more about that. Well, you're not alone. A lot of people don't know about history, and particularly they don't know about history about about African American people, which uh, at Brown, particularly in athletics, which really started before the 1900s. Going back to a guy named William Edward White, who came to Providence from Georgia. Mother was a slave, father was a white plantation owner slash uh, business magnet, very, a lot of money. Somehow he found his way to Providence, and you have to wonder how did that all take place, you know, and, and you know, what. And what was it like for him? But William, William White uh, was a baseball player, and he loved the game. So he was on the 1879 Brown team, which happened to have won the, the so-called national championship, which was self-proclaimed because there were no leagues. He was the first baseman. Um, but he played on that team. But the significant thing for historians is, and most people don't even know this, in June of that year, he played one game for the Providence Grays, who were in the National League, uh, Professional League, yeah. thus making him the first African American to ever play in the major leagues. But you have to wonder what his experience was, how, how isolated he was, except my feeling is that any athlete playing on a team, they get a sense of bonding with their teammates that they may not find in, in the rest of their existence. But, yeah. but uh, White was a, a definitely a pioneer. Uh, and I'm glad to even be able to, to speak about him. I'm just imagining growing up in that time, we're talking about like the team bonding and being on the team myself, I realized that those relationships within the team sure. are some of the most important things to me. And, but in this era where racism is heavily, heavily influencing everybody's lives, I feel like that must be much harder to bond with teammates, let alone the rest of the world. Fritz Pollard, whom you, you know a lot about, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, his photos are in the, in the football uh, area. But Pollard uh, was probably, to my way of thinking, Brown's most singular athlete of, that, of the century of the 19, in the 1900s. He came, from, um, he came from Illinois. He was a great athlete, great music, musician, multi-talented guy. But he, he had an incredible way of persevering, and, and, and he did. So he comes in. Uh, I don't think the coach knew what he had in, in him. He was a great track man as well. Um, so he goes to pick up his uniform for the first day of practice. There was no uniforms left in, at Marston Fieldhouse. So they, they, gave, they gave him a you know, pair of cleats that didn't fit, the shirt that didn't, you know, didn't fit, all of that stuff. It was like the, the bottom of the equipment box. And they sent him out by himself to go kick the football around. So, I mean, he was very upset. And some little kids said to him, hey, mister, you know, aren't you any good? I mean, you're, you're over here by yourself. Well, he was basically isolated from his teammates. Uh, for example, uh, where, they, where they practiced was up behind, up behind Hope High School. So they all went up in the trolley. When he got on the trolley, his teammates jumped off. When he went into the shower, his teammates left. So we had the, he, he was about an eyelash away from quitting the whole thing. But that's just an example of, of internally what he faced. Yeah. Uh, also, the, like for me, largely it's because I, I was lucky enough to just grow up in a uh, different kind of environment. I'm the child of two immigrants from Nigeria. So wow. the idea <laughs> of encountering people different from myself has always been something I've grown up with. Like not just being black in America, but being black and being from a foreign culture. Growing up with that culture in my house, you get used to interacting and viewing how different people behave and learning how to, learning how to respect other people's cultures and how to 
really appreciate the, the best and worst parts of each.